Peace, family. Welcome to African Esquire TV. I'm your host, Tani Cherie. When you talk about imperialist institutions the side of the world, the top of them have to be probably the IMF and the WTO. And because of this, it's very interesting that in this time where we're seeing black women essentially being used to pacify resistance on every front, that the WTO looks as though it will now be ran by an African woman, an African woman from Nigeria. A new chief for the World Trade Organization. Ngozi Okonjo Iweala is poised to become the first woman and African to occupy the post. A finance minister in Nigeria and top World Bank economist with a reputation for shaking things up, she now faces her biggest challenge yet in international trade, building bridges between adversaries and bringing a fresh approach to a struggling organization. So let's look briefly at this story and then let's talk about how this really complicates the ability of our people to see past the facade of colonialism, but even with a institution as far clearly unambiguously imperialist as the WTO. So the incoming chief of the World Trade Organization has a reputation for shaking up guardians of wealth and power that will come in handy to yeah, Finding herself on the wrong side of the Trump administration, her lack of trade negotiating experience made her a target for unilateral US veto, despite the endorsement of the organization's selection committee and almost all of the other members. I want to emphasize this, that the WTO, although they're supposed to be an uh, organization that's not beholden to one country, it really is an American institution. Oddly enough, it's like an American institution that pretends to be independent, but everyone knows it's not. And the, and reason, the reason why you can tell everyone knows it's not is here we are. It shows you right there. The United States vetoed this woman trying to uh, t trying to take the position of leadership in the WTO, and no one could say anything about it. Clearly, if one country has a veto power, then your institution is not independent. It's really an American institution. But Biden now is giving her his, his blessing. It says after the only um, other candidate withdrew, Okonjo Iwala is poised to become the first woman and the first African to lead the WTO in its 25 year history. Here we go again. It's the first African to lead the WTO. It's the first African woman. This is something that we're going to celebrate. It says that the WTO barely needs a shakeup. All three pillars of the Geneva based trade body work under threat. It's, use, it's useless. Usefulness has been called into question as China's brand of state capitalism increases its footprint on the global economy, fomenting criticism from Brussels to Brazil. And there goes the real issue or really the reason why this probably is happening now more than ever. So read the whole article. I'm going to hit some major points right now. One, um, the IMF is, like I said, it's really an imperialist institution. It's one that literally keeps the third world countries. Um, I'm sorry, this is WTO, but same with the IMF. But the WTO is a really an imperialist organization. It basically keeps the 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 third world countries um, beholden to the policies of the West. They can't really do access exercise economics outside of what the West will allow them. And if they do, then they really will face stagnation. Um, so the fact that a black woman and African woman is going to be the head of this institution is clearly going to be used as another way to pacify us, but to pacify us at a time where we can't really afford any more pacification. We have to call out neocolonialism. We have to organize against neocolonialism. We have to make sure that we're clear that these exploitative relationships with these bodies cannot be tolerated into the future. Now, the other side of this that we have to consider is the fact that China is essentially being used to uplift the West, meaning because China has gained so much influence in Africa, a lot of which we should absolutely be questioning. But if you're not, if you're going to question China's influence in Africa and not question American influence in Africa, then understand you're being used for propaganda. But ha what's happening is essentially that the United States is threatened by China. And I'm noticing a lot of Africans, rather than combating imperialism in general, rather than saying there's no reason for any outside interference to have this much bearing on our people, we're going to attack China, but we're going to let the United States live rent-free doing what they've always done. Despite the fact that if you compare the two, 
the United States with their assassinations and military interventions, you really can't compare which one has had the most detrimental effect. Again, I'm not someone who's like, China is great for Africa. I think that regardless of anything, African people have to control their own resources. And until we organize for that, then we're going to always be used and we're going to be abused. But understand that the way that they're trying to, trying to make this um, work for them, this this antagonistic China relationship is they're trying to gain power over China, not because they're better, not because they're going to do you better, not because they have a better history, but because they want you to be more comfortable having a white oppressor than having one that's Chinese, literally. And that's what a lot of people, I think, if you really think about it, the fact that so much outrage is against China that isn't against the United States and Europe that's something that we should be questioning. Why is it that one makes it to set and not the other? Finally, so I'll say one more thing. That is that the fact that this woman is being uh, branded as being uh, someone who's gonna shake things up. We know that the way the systems work is the systems will not allow anyone to take a position of leadership if that person is not going to go with the system's agenda. So. Trust me, if she is really this person that shakes things up, they're not going to continue having her in this position. She's going to be ousted and she's not going to be allowed to exercise authority inside of an institution that again was created to benefit the West. This must be emphasized because they're going to try to make it seem like this is a revolutionary person, but understand if she's still in that position, I promise you it's not because he's revolutionary. Think about the fact that Biden has given her to go ahead. You think Biden will let a revolutionary person who's going to shake up the international economic space there for African people or for, for people in the quote unquote third world globally? No, he would not allow that to happen and he would certainly not give her his approval. So understand the propaganda that's going on, understand the deceiving nature that these people try to put things and messages into our mind to make us think that we should be happy for certain things even when they're actually for against our interest and for their own. So that's all I have on this story. I will see you guys in the next video. Hey family, this is Tierney Cherie. I'm here to make an announcement that I'm very, very excited to make. I'm excited because I really think this is something that is important for our people. Otherwise, I would not have devoted so much time and energy towards it. So I finished my first book and the book title is Fostering False Identity, The Child Welfare System's Design of Social Control of the Black Family. Now, why is this book something that I think will be very important for our community? Well, number one, it's dealing with the system of white supremacy, particularly the way that the system has targeted our children. If you don't know, our children are literally our future. Without our children, we have no future. And so understand that the system is very crafty when figuring out what to derail first. And to me, it's no mistake that the system particularly went after the black family. If you look at what happened whenever we were enslaved by this system and continues to go against the black, go after the black family, continues to go after black children, continues to try to villainize African parents. So for that, I wanted to particularly talk about this subject. Now, the other thing that the, that the uh, book will deal with is our African identities. Why is it that our African identities are a threat to the system? Why is it that whenever we want to identify ourselves as being African, we get so much drawback inside of the black community? I think a lot of us are not aware of the history of assimilationist thought inside of our community, this idea that we have to be close to white in order to be accepted. And so that's another subject that we delve into in this book. So I'm hoping that anyone who is, obviously if you're a parent, a black parent, and you really want to understand why it is that these systems are going after your children, I encourage you to read this book. I hope that it will arm you with a lot of knowledge and a lot of foresight, not just about how to protect your own children, but how to organize in your community, because that's really the purpose of the book, is to say that we have to organize among ourselves in order to protect ourselves from this white supremacist system. And then obviously, if you're an organizer in general, this is something that I think is important for you to read, because like I said, so like I, this is a subject in the black community that we just don't discuss enough. Um, child welfare is not something that is going to get enough attention. People obviously will organize them around other causes, but this is one that is really important that I feel like we have to pay more attention to.